Hi everyone, and um, welcome to lecture number five. If you, I, I don't know if you noticed that, but there's always a kind of a gap between when the uh, timer actually starts going and I'm actually on. That's why I always hesitate. Anyway, um, today I'm not quite sure how long this lecture is going to be uh, because even though it's only three pages for the first part, you'll see what I mean. Like if you take a look at your notes, there's going to be a lot of elaboration. So make sure not only do, that you have your notes in front of you, but also be prepared to, to, to make notes of your own because there's a couple of things we really have to be careful of for the second paper, and that's more or less what we're talking about today. So before we begin, keep in mind all the structural elements, uh, all the principles that we've already talked about. Those principles will work for almost any paper you ever write, okay, regardless of the length or what have you. There is one or two, there are one or two exceptions, uh, one of which we will look at later on, okay, I'm not going to mention it now. Um, and so keep that in mind because that will be the structure that we're, we're still looking for in the second paper and for the final paper as well. Okay, so let's start then with a basic definition of what we mean by cause and effect. Cause and effect will be the second paper that you're doing. Now, but, but let me be clear, cause or effect, you'll see what I mean. Now let's start with the worst joke of the entire term, okay? Up until around 500 years ago, it was accepted that human beings observe the sky, watch the sun come up and the sun go down, okay? Notice my language, the sun come up, the sun go down, and remarked on the comfortable regularity of the sun's journey around the earth. Then someone named Nicholas Copernicus, okay? I'm sure many of you have heard of him. His dates, you've got them right there, 1473 to 1543. Uh, he was a Polish astronomer. And he began to doubt the validity of an Earth-centered universe. And so Copernicus theorized that it was it, were, it was we who were going around the sun. Okay? And so now people began to question the cause for the relationship between the movements of the sun, question mark, and the planets. The effects of the Copernican theory were astronomical. No, no. Astronomy? Large? Anyway, okay. I said, worst, worst joke of the, of the term, all right? Okay, so, but the realization of the connection between cause and effect, especially with something like the Earth going around the sun instead of the other way around, that would have profound consequences, right? In terms of religion, I don't, I'm not going to elaborate, but I think many of you know what I'm talking about there. Science, okay? As a matter of fact, we're nearing the Renaissance period where we're going to really get the rise of science as we know it today, right? And then philosophy, huge in philosophy for those of you who are taking any courses, right? And then finally, art. And it's it's it, if you are an art major or if you're interested in these ideas, go take a look at a painter named Caravaggio. Caravaggio is one of the first to really break the mold on what what, what the subject matter of painting was all about. Instead of painting landscapes or religious iconography, Caravaggio would, would paint scenes such as people cheating at cards. Okay, One of his famous paintings is something called Card Sharps. And so, so we begin to see a shift, a shift in you know, basically the way in which people think, the, the way in which the world operates. And so that's what, 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 what a causal analysis is all about. And so, and we're going to get into that really, really specifically in the next half hour or so. I should warn you, by the way, I'm probably going to take a bit of a break, um, only because I find it like it's it's long to go for a full hour without any dialogue or interaction. So I'll probably pause in about half an hour, all right, or at the half hour mark. And so, anyway, um, the Copernican theory is an example of the search for causes, as well as the attempt to understand effects. Okay, and again, we're going to get really specific on that. So let's be nice and clear. Okay, where are we moving in this course? The next portion of the course, the next essay, okay, that's going to be due, will deal with and highlight this, or at least notice where I made the bold. Okay, we are interested in identifying reasons for something happening, or the consequences of something happening. But notice, and I'm going to say, I'm probably going to say this about 10 times to, uh, today in the lecture. You're going to do one or the other, okay? Not both. So let's get into it, all right? And I'll show you some specifics. 
I'll show you some topics, okay, or at least how to begin a topic. We'll talk a bit about, you know, how to put a thesis together when it comes to a causal uh, paper, all right? And again, there's no one way, but I'll, I'll show you a whole lot of different possibilities, okay? So, um, when we think of causal analysis then, okay, so that's what we're doing, okay? It's a rhetorical pattern based on really three aspects, and, you know, pretty straightforward, I would say. In the first one, the writer attempts to analyze the reasons that led to something, and now I'm going to, I'm going to go slowly here, such as an event or decision. So this is the point where I think you want to pause, okay? Okay, or at least make a note, okay? You have to be really specific when it, be, when it, be, when it comes to your event or your, your decision. In other words, the, the event or the decision will be your topic. That'll be your starting point. And so by the end of, of the first half today, I'll show, or, or at least by the end of, of the lecture, I'll show you how some topics work and some topics don't. If you choose the wrong topic, okay, if, you, if, you, if your topic is too general, too large, then your paper will not be very strong. So I'm going to give you some tips today, and I'm, I'm, I'm almost, I'm almost going to suggest, look, to save ourselves some time, just do it this way, okay? And so let's get into it a bit more. So you're going to you're going to choose okay the reasons that led to something such as and then notice it's in bold there an event or decision. So when you're choosing your topic, think about something that literally happened in time. Okay? Something that actually you can point to and say that happened on that date. Okay? Or or, or you know within a week or what have you. And so again, okay, I'll, I'll give you some examples as we get near the end. Number 2, the, reader could, the writer could uh, uh, attempt to analyze it, the, the event or decision's possible consequences. All right, and, and again, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. And then sometimes in a causal analysis, the writer does both. Both looks at the causes and the effects. We do not want to do that for, for our purposes here. We simply don't have enough room, okay? And, and it, it, would, it just makes for longer essays. There's no need, all right? But if you're ever asked to write a causal analysis, you might want to ask your prof, well, that's, you know, do you want me to do both aspects? Do you want me to do just one? But for our purposes here, you're only going to be doing one. All right? So, you're going to be doing the causes or the effects. And so, let's go to page two now. A causal analysis answers one or two questions. So remember, the structure is exactly the same as the first paper. All we're doing now is, is just, you know, looking at the material in a bit different way. That's all, okay? So. What were the causes, so causal analysis and answers one of two questions, okay? What were the causes of S, okay? Or what are the effects of S, okay? Remember, we're doing one of two, where S signifies the event or the decision. And again, like I said, I'm, I think I'm going to elaborate quite a bit in, in, the, like in the next 10 minutes, like starting right now. So to write an effective causal analysis, there's, there's at least six or seven things you want to be aware of. Okay, some apply to any paper, but, but some are very specific to causal analysis. So look at the first one there. Be honest and objective in your investigation. What does the research okay, or the background information say? Now, this is really important, not necessarily just for a causal analysis, but any essay, all right? Don't make up your mind okay, until you see what the research says. Quite often, and this, this was my problem in first year, okay? I would have my mind made up about something before I, before I even did any research. Well, if you have your mind made up before you do any research, then guess what? You're gonna spend forever, okay? Unless you're lucky, you're gonna spend forever trying to find research that fits the opinion, okay, that you already have before you even looked at anything. You don't wanna do that. So remember, let's do it the other way around right? Find out what the research says first. If you don't happen to agree with it, who cares? All you're doing is writing an essay, right? In other words, maybe maybe you'll go, like, you'll write against your opinion. Fine, fine. You'll be surprised. For those of you who are in first year, you'll be surprised when you're in fourth year and you look back at the papers that you're writing for me, okay, this year, you'll laugh. You'll laugh at some of them thinking, was I really thinking that back then? And so, so in other words, I suggested this to you when, when we were looking at structure. Don't don't make up your mind too early. Let the research tell you what you're going to write about, right? Then make your your argument around that. Okay, so try and keep that in mind. All right. Now, 
Um, when I say analyze complex ideas carefully in order to distinguish between the remote and the immediate, um, all I mean by that is, like, are the points that you are making specifically pertinent, okay, to the argument at hand? In, in other words, try not to get ideas that, that are so remote, right, that, that maybe they could be applied, but it's a stretch. So instead, find the material, you know, that actually talks about your topic at hand. Now, number three goes back to number one. Don't be swayed by your initial biases and prejudices, okay? Like I said, you might have opinions, but have, have, you, really, have you really done research on your opinions? Like, we, we usually wouldn't do that, right? We all have opinions, but have we really thought them through in an analytical way? So that's what I'm suggesting to you then. Don't be swayed by those things. And here's a perfect example right here, okay? Where do we get a lot of our information? Well, obviously we get it from, like when I'm talking about like, like world events or what have you, we get it from newspapers, we get it from television. And we have to remember, and this is gonna sound biased on my part, we have to remember that newspapers, television, these things are not neutral, okay? And so quite often you will see, like I've seen this, okay? I've lived long enough to see so many workers' strikes. And quite often the media will take management side when it comes to a strike. So you'll see things like, the reason for a given worker's strike is greed and laziness. I could give you examples, I'm not going to because I can get into trouble, but basically, these are the simple ways of looking at a, you know, a given situation, right? But quite often, when you see something going on, such as a worker strike or something like that, it's far more complex than a newspaper or the television will, will, will give you. So that's where it helps to actually do some research. That's where it helps to, 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 you know, to find out exactly what, what is going on, right? So be aware of stuff like that. Now, the next one is a favorite. It's a favorite. And I, students love doing this. And I'm telling you, if you do this next thing, you're not going to do very well. Don't oversimplify. All right. So let me show you, like, let's read that sentence. Okay. The reason for violence in society is caused by all the violence on television. Like, like I can't tell you how many times I've read essays like that. Or, or the reason why certain children become violent, right, is because of the violence that they watch on television. There's absolutely no, no research out there that, 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 can, that can actually support that claim. Think about it. The reason for violence in society is caused by all the violence on television. Well, isn't there a problem there? In other words, wasn't there violence okay, in the world before the invention of television? Like, obviously there was, okay? So be aware of that, okay? Watch out for oversimplification like that. Again, again, see, oversimplification can come from, from, from like our, our, our opinions that we haven't really worked through. They're just, they're just you know, they're just, that's, that's just the way I, I feel about things. Once I do my research, maybe I'll find out, no, it's not, it's not quite that simple, okay? So as I said, watch out for that. Now, this next one, okay, I think all of, most, most of you, I shouldn't say all, most of you will probably identify with the example I'm about to give, okay? Archduke Ferdinand. Be aware that an event can be triggered by a complex variety of things. Weren't you taught in high school, okay, that the First World War was because of one guy who was assassinated, okay? Well, it was probably far more complex than that. But it's easy to give a narrative like Archduke Ferdinand gets assassinated and therefore everybody goes to war. Okay, so that that's what I mean by you know go out and find out, do the research, right? And I think the research then will inform you much better. Okay, and we we haven't all we're doing right now is just talking about the information in your paper. We haven't really talked yet about a thesis statement and all that. We'll get to that in just a second. Okay, and then finally, and this is one of my favorites, never mistake coincidence for causation. So. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if you've ever gone online, online and, and, and looked at this, but have you ever looked at the, the there's websites out there that talk about the coincidences between the assassination of Abraham Lincoln and the assassination of John F. Kennedy. Okay. And I, I always find these things fascinating. So I'll give you a quick example. Kennedy was in a Lincoln. Okay. When he was assassinated. Okay. Kennedy, Lincoln, and then Lincoln was assassinated in Ford Theater, okay, or Ford's Theater, okay? So in other words, an automobile maker as well. 
if you look down even the letters of their names, like there's a whole lot of different things that people talk about or, you know, basically speculate on. But I don't understand what the logic is there because in order for there to be any kind of causal connection, the person who killed Lincoln would have had to have been the same person who killed Kennedy. And that means he would have been over 200 years old. So, so that's what I mean by watch out for, for coincidences, right? Instead of actually finding out, okay, this is actually what happened, all right? Okay, now, based on everything we've just talked about, your, if you take a look at the next point there, your focus and scope, okay, will be very important. By that I mean, now, okay, I'll give you something I was gonna do at the end, but why not just mention it quickly now? You wanna do an essay on the causes of the Second World War. That's an awfully big topic. But you have an interest in the Second World War. Okay. Could you choose one battle in particular and talk about what led up to its failure or what have you? That's exactly what you want to be thinking about with your topics. All right. You might start with something large, but then narrow it down. So that's what I mean by your focus and your scope. Scope just simply means the parameters of the paper, right? So watch out for stuff like that. Now, this next part here, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go slowly, okay? Because the way in which we're gonna put a thesis together, we can do it a couple of ways. And I'm gonna show you weak thesis statements to begin with, then we'll see how, how do we create better ones. So the first thing I have there then, it, I'm looking at the technique of cause and effect now. Limit your topic, that's, that's more or less what I was just talking about a second ago, okay? Limit your topic to one you can explore adequately in the space allotted. I'm not quite sure off the top of my head, but I believe the second paper will still only be about three and a half pages. It, 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 it says it in the outline. Please don't email the, the length, right? It's all there in the outline. But again, you don't have a lot of room, right? You don't have a lot of room. And, and if you go a bit over the, the required length, don't worry about it. We talked about that already, right? But don't give eight pages, right? right? We talked about that. Okay, so let's look at an, a, a, our first template for a thesis, but it's not a very good one. So, the causes of S, where S, remembering back, okay, is our event or decision. The causes of S were A, B, and C. Okay, so as we saw with the first paper that we were looking at, that's not a very strong thesis statement, correct? But it could work. A statement like that could work if we put it in the sections, sections of the argument. And then we had another statement afterwards, okay, that basically said something like the principal causes. So notice now that's a tiny bit better because I'm saying these are the primary things, okay? And this is just a, a quick example. It's not, it, this isn't even true, all right? I could give you lots of pointers on, you know, failure at university. Um, but the, fail, uh, the principal causes of failure at university are lack of basic skills, lack of study skills, and lack of motivation. Okay, actually that's not true. The, I think you would all know the answer to this. The number one reason why students do not end up graduating from university is economic. Okay, it's money. But I will give you a little tip right now. Let's, let's stop with the notes for a moment. Ask yourself next next September, okay? If you know if we're all back on campus, ask yourself if you have a, a class at 8:30 in the morning, and then nothing for the rest of the day until the class at 5:30. Okay, like look at your schedule. I'll almost guarantee you that will be the one day that you waste the most time. I'm sure you've been through that. I'm sure you've noticed that already, right? When you have large gaps like that, right? It, it, it's amazing how much time we can waste. So. A large reason why many students fail at university is actually time management. So always be aware of your time management. It's funny, for those of you who are working and then taking this course, right, you know all about time management, right? In other words, you have to juggle your time, okay? But if this is the only thing you're doing all summer, you may find yourself almost falling back behind in the lectures simply because it's the only thing you need to do twice a week, right? So so watch out for that. Time management is huge, at, well, huge at any job, right? Um, but especially for university. Okay. Sorry, I don't mean I don't I don't mean to. You know. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, what's the word I was looking for there? 
I, like, I don't mean to 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 give like to be your advisor or anything like that, but it is something to think about. Okay. All right. Now, so we did the causes. We could also do then the effects. So the effects of you know of the effects of S have been A, B, and C. Again, it's not 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 the greatest. Okay. We're going to get to the, the really good ones in a second. Now, the only reason why I've got this example here for those of you who are maybe into sports. You may have been around, if, if you're from Ottawa, you may have been around, there was talk that the Ottawa Senators were actually going to leave the city, okay? This goes back to another owner, not Eugene Melnick, it's another owner, and I won't mention his name, It's I have it right here, I know it, but, um, and so you could you could have written something like, and this is exactly what newspapers and talk radio were, were doing at the time they were talking about these things, and so the effects, you know, or the consequences of a city losing its professional sports team would be, and then Notice again, now I've got my sections, a decline in small business sales, a loss of outside financial investment into the community, and a demise of sport culture in the city. Okay, So again, you see that's not very strong, right? In other words, if all you're going to do is say the causes were or the effects were, okay, then, then again, if you remember back to what we did with our example essay, okay, then all you're really doing is explaining. So you want to do a bit more than that, obviously. Okay, so let's do that. And I think we're getting close to doing that. And so let's just say you were doing something on sport, though. Um, it would be possible, like this, and this is something some of you will want to do. Like even though something may not have happened in Canada, for instance, you may want to write on. Well, it happened in in another country, so therefore, you know, the 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 effects could, there are the consequences could happen here. Be careful. Because when you write a paper like that, inevitably, you're going to be tempted to speculate. Okay? So I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm not saying you can't look at data from, from other sources or other places, I should say, and relate it to something going on in Canada or wherever, wherever. But be careful not to speculate. Okay? So, and again, just be aware of that. And so, and there it is right there. That's the very next point in, in the... Uh, in the the notes okay so here we go so now we're, we're going to get a bit specific here okay i just want to show you how to go from the effects of s were a b and c let's make it better the major factors that led to x were a b and c so let's do this slowly now okay let's just take a couple of minutes there's about three or four things we can talk about there the very fact that i include now the word major at least now gives the paper, and, and you should be making notes right here, okay, put a star, okay, the major factors. So now, what does that do? It gives you a bit of an argumentative tone, right? You're not just saying these were factors that led to something, you're saying these were the major ones. Believe it or not, by having a simple word like that, it creates a tone that becomes more argumentative, because that's going to be the one question you're going to have for this essay. You're going to be wondering, well, how do I how do I create an argument if all I'm doing is showing the th you know the things that led up to? Okay, so instead, the major factors. Okay, going right back to our example essay, the most important factors. Okay, words like that will actually turn your as long as long as you keep that idea going, right? That these were the major ones. Don't forget that focus. That will give your, your paper the argu argumentative tone that you want. That's usually the major question when, when we're in group and everyone's wondering, well, how, how do I create an argument out of this? That's how you do it. And so there isn't one answer. You will make an argument based on the information that you find, okay, that in fact, or maybe you might even go against the grain. And you know, there might be individuals who argued certain things were the reason for something to happen. And you might say, well, actually, no, it was it, 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 these and that's fine too, as long as you have information, okay, sources, or you know, at, at least you know one source to back you up. Where we have to remember, it's still only a first year university, okay, of course. And I understand that. More about that in just a second. Now, I'm going to show you something here because uh, 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 this is kind of it's it's confusing for some. So notice where I had the major factors, okay? Now take a look at a different one. The above factors, okay, your section headings, were the most significant, okay, in the destruction or development of X. Now that is a good template, but I have to explain. What do I mean by the above factors and then your section headings? Well, you're not gonna actually include the phrase your section headings. What I'm suggesting is when you say the above factors, you're referring back to the previous sentence, 
okay, which laid out the A, B, and C. Shall I say that again? The major factors that led to X were A, B, and C. So in other words, in a paper like that or in a thesis like that, you're combining the sections and the thesis. Some people like to do it that way, okay? But others like to separate the sections and the thesis, okay? I like to do it that way. I think I mentioned that to you in, in lecture three. So it's up to you. Either works, either works, okay? But when I say the above factors, I'm simply referring, I'm referring back to the sections I just laid out. That's the way I like to do it. You can choose either way. I think right there, though, there is there's the distinction you want to be aware of okay, for your second paper. How do I put a thesis together? You can do it one of two ways, right? And once I've said the above factors, okay, then pretend that your section headings, that phrase isn't even there, were the most significant in the destruction okay, or development of X, where once again, X is your event or your decision. I had S earlier. I don't know why I shifted to X here, but okay. So now, do you see now how, how we can we can do something like that? And again, I'm going to give you some topics in just a second. There's some in the course outline as well. Okay, I don't know how great they are, but there it might be a starting point. But do you see now? Do you understand what I'm saying when I say we're the most significant in the destruction? So we could be talking about the destruction of an empire. Okay, like literally. I mean, like you can choose whatever you want. The destruction of a company, like a failure of a company. Okay, when I say destruction, I mean like failure or whatever, right? Or development, meaning, okay, these were the factors that made it successful, okay? So, again, you, you, could, you could talk about anything you want, right? So, that's not a bad way of thinking about it as well. That's why I chose those. I, I added those just for this lecture, all right? I, I thought, there's a nice template, destruction, development, whatever. In other words, what led to the failure of something, okay? Or what created its success, so there's another way you could do it, right? Again, though, failure, destruction, like 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 reasons that led up to something, I always find it they're just easier to do, okay? But again, up to you. And so, finally, then you will you will make sure you support your assertions. Well, what are your assertions? Those are your arguments. How will you do that? You do it through proof, right? I'm looking at the time now. I can tell this lecture is probably going to go about 45 minutes, so I may not even stop. I may, I, I might just go through. It might even be only 40. And so, take a look now, okay, at what I bolded. Okay, I have found that doing the causes leading up to an event slash decision usually work better than the effects. Okay, so because we don't have a, 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 like the one-on-one -on -one time that that, that that you know that that in, in which we could flesh out ideas. Because something like ideas like that don't work well in email. They don't. Do yourself a favor, okay? Let's just agree right now. You're all going to do the causes leading up to something. I, I, all I'm trying to say is it, make it easier. It, it's so much easier if you do it that way. Because when you get into the effects, it just gets too large. That's where you start having questions, and that's that's where you'll start wondering, well, what am I supposed to include here? What? Take the causes that led up to something. And again, I've got topics we're going to do in just a second. Please just take my word for that, okay? If this, if the, if this like I said, if we had one-on-one -on -one contact, we could chat about it. We could take 10 minutes and, you know, but I, there's just not enough time with email, right? And so do yourself a favor, all right? Why? And then notice the next line, because in general, causes are usually more tangible, okay? Okay, they're usually more tangible, while effects quite often can lead to speculation. So why not make it easy on yourself? And so remember, before I get into a couple of other things here, we're not looking for anything new in terms of structure. Like use all the structure I showed you for your first paper. All we're looking for now, okay, is just an ang a different way of writing a paper. So and that so cause, effect, whatever. That, that's the only difference. The only difference. All right. But remember, to turn it into an argument, you're going to talk about these, you know, the most significant, the most important. Okay. That's how you turn it into an argument. All right. So in general, in general, okay, or sorry, uh, two examples of topics then, okay. So like I like I said already, you could write not on a certain war. Notice why I have the, the question marks there, but maybe you know a certain battle, right? Or like I said, um, well, there's many different ways you could go about it. I've, I've got better ones though, I think. All right. So now you might want to take a couple of notes here as well. Maybe you're interested in feminism. 
I come back to feminism quite often because I find it works nicely for, you know, per the purposes of what I'm doing here. Okay, you want to write on feminism. Well, no, that, that's not a very good topic. How can you, how can you, like, when did feminism start? Okay, like, we don't know when feminism, okay, hang on. Could I write on when women first got the vote in Canada? Perfect. See the difference? One is simply a topic. It, 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 there's nowhere to start or end because it's not an event or a decision. But women getting the vote, okay, now we can work with that because we can look at what were, you know, the, the, the reasons that led to, and by the way, if you're not too familiar with Canadian history, it would be 1916 in Manitoba. See, you got to remember that too. You can't just, you couldn't just write a paper on, you know, women, women getting the vote in Canada. Again, that didn't happen all at once. It, it happened in different places at different times. But you could say, okay, what were the events or, or, or the, 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 the causes that led up to women getting the vote in Manitoba? It might surprise you, by the way. It's not a bad topic to look into. Uh, and it has, it has nothing to do with uh, the Prime Minister of Canada, Sir Robert Borden, being a, a, you know, a nice guy who wanted to give equality to women. Had nothing to do with that, right? Think of the date. 1916. What's going on in 1916 in Canada? First World War. A lot of the reasons why women got the vote in, in uh, Manitoba to begin with had to do with something called conscription. Anyway, so, so, but notice what I did there, all right? Feminism? No. I mean, when does feminism begin? Who, like maybe Sappho back on the island of Lesbos, and I'm not joking when I say that, right? Back in antiquity, okay? But something that happened something specific that, you know, g gave a breakthrough for women's rights or what have you, right? Again, if you can find it in time, yes, that'll work. That's the difference. I, I don't know how better I can say it, right, for all of you, no matter what your topics are. So remember, can I do my, my, my cause and, or, or effect essay on war? Well, no. But could you do it on a specific incident that happened in war? Yes. Okay? All right? And so, uh, because I, the only reason why I'm saying that is war seems to be a very uh, popular topic with many first-year students, and so that's the way you would do it, right? Remember, let's go back to what we started with, limited. Think of your focus and your scope. You, you, it can't be too big. Okay? Okay, so, um, yes. And then finally, then I think I am going to just, I'm going to have like a two minute break. I find that going a whole half hour with nobody interacting, I just find it, it, it's a bit, so I'll just catch my breath. But last, okay, if you're still a bit confused about this, here, here, it, it, I'm still like on page three um, and I'm stalling that. Yeah. How about an invention? Now, this again is what you want to think about. Okay. I could look at something like um, the, the telegraph. By the way, if you're doing an invention, please do not do the internet or smartphones or don't do that. Do something earlier, okay? Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll have some fun right now with you. Okay, but maybe we did the telegraph. Okay, so we could look at the telegraph and we could look at, okay, what led up to the invention of the telegraph? So that would work. Like inventions, they work. Okay. Now, with inventions, you could like you could look at the effects as well. But remember everything I've talked about in the first half hour. That's where you know, like if you have an invention like the telephone, well, okay, what led up to it? That's interesting and tangible. The effects? Oh my gosh, it's so far-reaching. Where would you begin? Where would you end? Right? Okay. So, like I said, I keep going back to. Uh, okay, I've got another perfect one right here. Okay, a medical cure. Well, if you did something like the effects of, um, of the polio vaccine, right? My God, you're going to be writing for, 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 for years. But let's say you did something like the causes that led up to a certain medical breakthrough. I don't know if you're aware of this, because I know some of you will probably want to go into uh, to medicine. Many medical breakthroughs, happen, breakthroughs by the way, uh, happen by accident. And I'll give you a perfect example, and you can even do it on this. The birth control pill. Okay? That was medical. The medical profession was primarily male, okay, at the time of the invention of the birth control pill. It was not, doctors were not looking for a fertility pill for, 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 uh, uh, for women. 
It was supposed to be designed for men. And it was just an accident that somehow, right, that uh, it turned out the, the, uh, the pill worked for women. So again, when we have our own assumptions, opinions, prejudices, it's it's amazing how like like how how limited okay our scope can be. But when you start to look into these things, it's like oh well, I didn't know that. Isn't that interesting? How you know almost the big one by the way. I'm sure you guys know is penicillin, right? I'm I'm sure so. But um, I hope I have that right. I think it was penicillin, right? Where they went away for the weekend and left the beakers un, uh, 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 unclean, and then they came back and started to notice the bacteria and all that. But anyway, so a medical breakthrough. Uh, but again, but looking at the causes that led up to it, okay, can be very interesting. Very interesting. Um, it's funny with you know with, with what's happening in the world right now, right? Obviously, you don't want to go anywhere near there. But one day, that will be interesting to see how they finally came up with a vaccine, right? Um, and so, so I don't need to elaborate too much on that. I don't want to bother you. But that those seem to be the when when a student says to me, I have no idea what I want to do. Usually, an invention, okay or a medical cure, that seems to be the go-to. Now, remember though, if you're doing an invention, again, don't do something too recent, all right? Um, here's a perfect topic. How about, yeah, I was gonna give you a topic, but then it kind of goes against the rest of the lecture. Okay, okay, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna give you one. I'm gonna give you one, which uh, will be an, F, an effect paper. How about the dangerous effects of the invention of the printing press. All right. Okay. So it's always fun sometimes to go, like I said, against the grain. Yeah, you, most of you would think, what in the hell is he talking about? But it is interesting how, for the longest time, because of movable type, right? You know, Gutenberg, 1435, and all that. Although he's not the first, he just creates the whole movable type thing. Um, it's it's funny how with movable type, uh, with uh, the the printing press, etc., like you know the earliest photocopiers, everybody's reading the same stuff. So it's it's funny how propaganda can be disseminated, right? If everybody if everyone's reading the same stuff, well then you know I can kind of start to convince you of things, right? Like nobody's kind of questioning, if you know what I mean. So that's a fun one, but again, I don't know how much information I'll actually find on that. Although there was work that was done on that in the 18th century. Yeah, uh, there are a few writers. I can't think of them off the top of my head. Um, but if you think about it, the whole Protestant reform, right? All, all that. Um, if you want to, here's a fun one if you wanted to. I'm trying to give you as many topics as I can because, as I said, we don't have as much contact. How about the creation, okay, of the Church of England? Now, some of you, will, you'll, I'm sure you'll smile at that one, right? Okay, that's a whole Henry VIII stuff and all of that, okay? So, anyway, um, like I said, yeah, let's let's close off the first half, and then I think I will just pause. I get some. I'm going to get some water or juice or something. Um, but let's just look at a couple of other things. All right. And again, I hope you made some notes there. I'm trying to just throw out, you know, whatever comes to mind. All right. And then, as I said, you've got some on the course outline as well. Um, all right. So the expectations then for your cause uh, or effect. I shouldn't have and there. Your causal analysis or cause or effect. And again, for most of you, do a cause. Okay. Reasons that led up to something. Um, you'll want proper essay format with an introduction, okay, a thesis, sections as usual, okay, and then obviously these things will lead to a final conclusion, okay. Now, make sure you have, unlike the first paper, make sure you have chosen a specific event or decision, okay, which is more academic in tone, all right, and what do I mean by that? Well, you should have an argument. So remember, in order to get a really good mark, so remember, it'll be words like most and, you know, the uh, most is probably the most common word that you can use, right? Because most important, most significant, right? There you go. So there, there's how you create an argument right there. That gives you then that tone that I was talking about. Then this next part will be maybe a bit contentious. Like you might be wondering, how do I do that? You're going to need, okay, uh, at least one academic source. Now, what do I mean by that? Okay, don't panic. Don't panic. You're going to need to find something, okay, that exists in the Ottawa U library database, okay? So it could be a book that you're going to quote from. It could be, and probably better, better journal article, right? Uh, and again, I'm going to show you how to document all that in the in the next lecture. Don't worry about that. Like we, we you know, we're, we're getting there. 
And I'm also, uh, it might even be up by now, I'm going to post a virtual library tour. This is something that I asked the librarian to give me. Okay, it's, it's the exact same presentation that the librarian gives when uh, we are in the classroom. The librarian comes in and does literally a virtual tour. So like we don't leave the classroom, everything is right there. And it's a, a, a PowerPoint kind of slideshow. So I'll post that for you as well, all right? And so do your best. I, I, I have to be honest with you. I'm not too well versed in auto we use library database because I use Carlton's. So I don't know if I told you that I teach at both places. So, but you'll need one source. And don't worry too much. Like, don't don't panic. You know, is this like if I don't know if you guys know the term peer reviewed and all that. If you can get what is known as a peer reviewed article, those are the best. But if you found it in our library database, right, then you should be fine. Like, in other words, I'm, I'm being lenient. Now, a couple of points on that. Do not email. OK, asking how do I cite a source that doesn't have an author? Well, if you found a proper source, it'll have an author, all right, or an editor. There will be a name. The only, the only exception that I can think of would be things like government pamphlets. But I would argue you want to stay away from government pam pamphlets because they're not academic, all right? There's always a bias in, in academic, uh, uh, or I should say, in government pamphlets. So let's agree on something right now, again, just so we save time. If there are no page numbers or no author, okay, then you really shouldn't be using whatever it is you found. It's as simple as that. So what does that mean? Well, that means you probably want to start thinking about weaning yourself off of websites. Okay, instead, start using the library more. Play around with it. Once you open up the library database, like once you get to the, the, the home page of the library, it's incredibly, incredibly simple how you can start finding material. Right? They, they have streamlined things so much. All you have to do is put in keywords, see what comes up. The only thing you really have to practice when it comes to the library, you, you really have to practice how, how you kind of focus down. Right? In other words, the first search you get might get you, you know, a million and a half hits, and obviously you don't want that. So, but it's the same as doing it. It's the same as doing anything on Google, right? If you do, if you put in too general a search topic, you're going to come up with thousands of things. But if you put in something more specific, okay, the more specific you get, the fewer hits, right, that that, that 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 you find. And so it works the exact same way. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to say, okay, you're going to need correct APA or MLA or Chicago, but you're going to need correct in-text citations this time. That's what the TAI and I are starting to look for. We're looking for, are you getting more academic? Now, what do I mean by that? Go back to the lecture on paragraphs. Do you remember when I showed you how you can work in, okay, Wordsworth 1998, or or when I said for MLA, you know, at the end of the quote, it's Wordsworth, no, like a space, no P or anything, page number. That's what you want to start practicing. Okay, now, don't worry about the end of your paper. Okay, the, the work cited or the, the work references or whatever, just do your best. Just do your best with that. Don't worry if it's correct or not, because in the next lecture, I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so and we'll talk about that. So so don't panic for now. Um, and then finally, yeah, the better you get at this stuff, you'll find you'll no longer have URLs in your in the, the actual body of your essay. Okay, you may need them at the end in your, your uh, work cited, but you won't need them in the body. And again, if you do it properly, okay, if you have an author, et cetera, you won't need to worry about URLs. And so I think, yeah, I'm going to pause at this point, okay? Like I said, I'm just going to get some water. I'll be back in, in two shakes of a lamb's tail, those of you who might know that phrase. Anyway, all right. And, and by the way, the second part is not going to be very long. I'm just going to do a bit more with commas places because I've noticed um, from the first papers that seems to be an issue. So. I'll just do it really quickly. I'm probably only going to take about another 10 minutes, okay? Anyway, all right, so I'll be right back. All right, so let's just quickly, okay, we'll take about 5, 10 minutes. Just look at a, a tiny bit more on common spaces because that does seem to be an issue, all right? Um, I talked about this in the second lecture, okay? Um, I talked about that in the second lecture. I'm just switching on something on my computer here. So I want to make sure we're all on the same boat. There it is. Okay. Yeah. All right. So in the, uh, I think the second lecture, we talked about a comma splice. All right. 
So when you have two, remember the phrase I used, independent clauses, and you try and push them together, remember that? And if you join them with a comma, right, well then that creates a comma splice. So, and as I said, that seems to be an issue, right, with the papers, so, so let's just quickly go over that one more time, all right? Take a look at, Joey went to the store, comma, he needed to buy eggs for supper. Well, if you remember, Joey went to the store, to the grocery store, that's an independent clause. He needed to buy eggs for supper, that's an independent clause. So you can't join them with a comma. So for those of you who are still maybe having a couple of issues with that, just think about a couple of things, all right? How do we catch a comma splice? Well, okay, take a look, okay, at the commas in, your, in the middle of your sentences and ask, okay, what went before the comma, what went after? Do they both sound like they could stand on their own? And if they do, chances are you have a comma splice. And so, um, yeah, compare, like I said, compare the clauses, okay, the groups of words. Okay, if they act as complete sentences, then you have a problem. And how do we fix a comma splice? Really simple. I'm just gonna go through two or three with you. I don't even think I needed to pause, right? I just wanna show you something quickly at the end. So we could, we could write, Joey went to the grocery store, period. He needed to buy eggs for supper, period. But I think you would agree that's a bit choppy, right? And so how about instead we can connect those phrases, okay, as long as we do it properly. So how about, okay, Joey went to the grocery store because he needed to buy eggs for supper. Okay, so now this is where I'm going to say a word here. I don't want to elaborate. We have certain words that, that, that are connecting words. They connect certain clauses, phrases, etc. They're called conjunctions. I mentioned it very briefly in the second lecture. I'm going to elaborate on that okay, later on in the course. I don't want to get too sophisticated. And don't be screaming at me, you know, well, but aren't there different types of conjunctions? Yes, there are. But I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, okay? And so, um, yeah, so, so there are ways that we can add certain words. By the way, your favorite word, if you're not a very good writer, your favorite word is the word and. It's amazing how and, the word A-N-D, can connect things as you move along. And it can avoid a lot of choppiness. If you tend to use semicolons, which you shouldn't, okay, unless you know what you're doing, and once again, okay, will be your friend. Okay? And is your daddy. Anyway, all right. I hope you I hope you found that funny. Anyway, okay. So yeah, so not much more to do today. Like I said, I didn't even need to pause. Um, and so, yeah, and so we could do it a different way, right? We could also sometimes have uh, a word that we looked at in, in lecture two. Joey went to the grocery store, comma, but he forgot to buy eggs for supper. So again, the word but works as a connective, except it's a different kind of connective. I'm not gonna say the word, it starts with an S, I know, don't worry about it, all right? And so a quick reminder then, let's just take a look quickly, five more minutes and we're done. Words like however, okay? Some of you are still having difficulty with that. And so if a sentence looks like that, okay? The major corporations, comma, however, comma, do not agree, then you're fine, you're fine. Remember, we can take that however out. The major corporations do not agree. You're fine. That follows the rule for introductory words or phrases. Number four, uh, number five, right? The, that was the complicated one. But if you're not sure, okay, watch here. If you have Justin is a great chef, comma, however, his apartment is a mess, that's a comma splice, okay? And so we could have done a couple of things there. We could put a period, but then Technically, I have to accept that you could have put a semicolon as well. But if you do either the, with the period, you need the capital H followed by however comma. And if you did the semicolon, you would leave it at the lowercase h, right? Still followed by a semicolon. And so basically, yes. Um, let's not even worry about the, the other part there. Let's just go to the very end. I just wanna show you two ways of doing this, right? And so if you remember, I talked about things working on different levels in the second lecture. Maybe I didn't, but don't worry about it. So the, there's two ways we could have written a, a sentence like this. Justin is a great chef, comma, remember, that was the first rule of commas, but his apartment is a mess. Okay, so now the word but, remember, well, a shift in thought. He's a great chef, but, and then messy, okay? On the other hand, what did I just say? Who's your friend? Who's your daddy? Justin is a great chef and his apartment is beautiful. Everything goes together. And so for now, for now, 
Try and work on comma splices, all right? Because as I say, they can be style wreckers. They're not easy to catch. They're not easy to catch, um, but it's it just something you know to help you improve. And so I might make a change or two for the next lecture. I noticed that I, I said we were going to be talking about narration, description, and all that. I, I will, but but not at length. I think it's more for for a, a course like this. I want to get into more of the the details, the fundamentals. So like I said, we'll do work cited. And uh, I'll talk a bit about definition. When when should we define words? Because basically, um, we're like we're almost halfway through, right? And there probably won't even be uh, a lecture in week twelve. So we are we're moving along. We're moving along. And so, like I said, um, I'll send you the notes as usual. And um, but I may not cover everything, if you know what I mean, right? I'll cover what I really think you need to to make sure you get through this course. So I think that's about it. Uh, 51 minutes. Yeah, that's not that's not bad. Uh, and um, like I said, uh, I'll be I'll be sending material out as uh, you know as I as, as I get to it. So that was the end then of lecture five, right? And I hope you're all doing well. Okay. Thanks very much.